All right, apologies to the live stream audience. Hopefully you can hear our audio. And in just a moment, we're gonna be bringing in Scott Guthrie, the Executive Vice President of Microsoft's Cloud and AI Group. In fact, let's welcome in Scott Guthrie now. Come on in, Scott. So as we said, we are here live at Microsoft Build, the big developer conference in downtown Seattle. Scott, have a seat. It's great to have you here. Thank you for having me. And, and uh, go ahead and scooch on up to the, as close as you can to that mic. And we should say, you do not have to hold this mic. Okay. <laughs> that was a great ad lib. For those of you who didn't catch it, Scott uh, double, did some double duty as a mic holder today after some technical difficulties. So. Yeah, that was fun. It was, you know. <laughs> Play by ear and uh, it was a good ad lib. <laughs> That's great, well we're doing the same thing here. It's, it's great to have you here, Scott, and thanks for doing the show. So Scott Guthrie, as we said, is the Executive Vice President of Microsoft's Cloud and AI Group. Scott, that's a new title for you. Yeah, you, you took on a much larger role, a uh, bigger scope as part of the recent restructuring of Microsoft's engineering organizations. What are you doing these days and how has your job changed over the last few months? Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, we recently did, um, some changes across uh, Microsoft about a month ago. And so I still run all the same teams I used to run, so Azure, Dynamics 365, Visual Studio, um, and management security, but then uh, most recently our AI teams uh, now all work for me, uh, HoloLens and a lot of our ambient work and mixed reality work that you saw in the keynotes this morning, and then also uh, the core Windows team. Um, so not the Windows client, not the shell and the, the client app pieces, but more specifically the, the base operating system teams uh, are now part of my organization as well. So Scott, right before you came in, I was asking Tom to define for me the intelligent edge. So Tom, you want to take a crack and Scott can tell you whether or not you're right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, I was describing it as sort of a shift in, you know, the centralization and decentralization of computing, I guess. You know, at some one point, our PCs did a lot of the work, we shifted a lot of the work then to the cloud, and now we're shifting back to this era in which devices at the edge can't wait for the cloud to, to decide for them. They need to do more of that work themselves. So how, how was that, was that good? It's not bad, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good description. I mean, I think, I kind of think of it less as per se even like shifting, and more just, you know, we're seeing huge increases in cloud capacity and usage, and expect that to only increase going forward. And you know, I think what's, what's happening is we're also seeing this uh, you know, continual shift also then in terms of the client computing on the edge or the devices. And both in terms of, you know, I'd say more traditional form factors, things like PCs or uh, smartphones or tablets, but also increasingly you know, new form factors and devices. And what are some of those? Like what, what these form factors that you're seeing emerge? You know, we showed a couple examples today, you know, ranging from internet connected buttons for simple scenarios or um, speakers or microphones that are, you know, listening to ambient noise and can do AI processing to drones that we flew around during the keynote uh, to, you know, drilling bits in uh, oil refinery or, you know, operating theaters in a hospital. Uh, you know, I think you're going to basically see, in, you know, the estimates around 20 billion. Uh, internet connected devices in the world by 2020. So that's less than two years away. And that's you know three times the number of people on the planet. And so I think you're going to see the edge processing both get richer on each individual device, but also just the volume of devices out there that are going to be connected and you know want to be able to run some local processing and be cloud connected and be able to aggregate that and do even richer things in the cloud. So one of the things that you announced today was called Project Connect for Azure. And as somebody who still has a Xbox 360 Connect in his living room, I was inspired to see at least the brand name live on. I realize it's a different project, but inspired in part by some of that technology that goes back to the original days of the motion sensor on the game console. What is Project Connect for Azure for people who missed this announcement? Well, in general, I mean, I think one of the things that we're seeing is, especially for things like vision, uh, or object detection, or speech, or any type of, of sort of uh, um, audio detection, you know, is, is if you're pumping all of that up into the cloud, you know, the latency involved of just copying bits across the internet, you know, means that you can't get sort of the real-time experiences that increasingly consumers want to have. And so, you know, one of the things we're, we're working on is how do you bring AI down to the edge, both in terms of software, but also increasingly in terms of hardware as well. And so with Project Connect, uh, for Azure, one of the things we're looking to do is how do we take you know, some of that work that we had and have used inside, whether it's HoloLens, whether it's around the Kinect that we built for Xbox, how do we package that up 
and enable developers to be able to take advantage of it and do local AI inferencing of audio, vision, object detection. So you can get near real time, instantaneous style experiences on the edge. Um, and be able to connect them and build even better apps. And so, you know, that's that's one of the things that we're looking to do with Project Connect is be able to provide a device that developers can use to build their own application experiences. How um, big a device are we talking about here when you when you think about potential applications for this? You know, for a lot of these devices, they're going to be very small. I mean, Project Connect is designed, you know, it's sort of like a small camera. Um, and, uh, you know, some people use it standalone. Some people want to be able to connect it to another smart device running on the edge. And uh, you know, the beauty of a lot of these things is they don't have to be big. I mean, even in the keynote, we showed this sort of internet connected Wi-Fi button. And you might say, well, that seems like a gimmick. What would you use for that? But you think about the number of scenarios where you know, people on the road are counting cars or you know, are across bridges or how many attendants are coming in and out of a movie theater. You know, those are all scenarios that people do today in a very manual way. Once you can actually connect it to the cloud, and connected to apps, you can start to build much, much richer experiences. And I think it's going to be also, how do you compose all these different devices together mm -hmm. uh, into kind of overall solutions and applications? And it's going to be a fun time for developers. Another announcement that you made today was the open sourcing of the Azure IoT Edge runtime. Yep. What does that do? What does that enable for people to, to, to change in terms of the devices on the edge? And can you explain that in, in terms that I can understand, Scott, which is a real challenge. Sure. <laughs> well, our Azure IoT Edge offering is um, something we've seen just tremendous interest in. And it, it basically runs on a device. So it could be your Windows PC or you know, your Mac laptop, or it runs on Raspberry Pis. It runs on you know, a wide variety of different systems running any operating system. And it makes it really easy for developers to basically build applications and run them on the edge uh, and distribute them and manage them through the cloud. And we did a great demo in my keynote where uh, Jeff just showed off how easy it was to build a simple app uh, that was talking to a camera and doing face detection with a camera all running locally on that Edge device. And, um, and I, Azure IoT Edge makes it easy to do that. And what we've done is we've announced the open sourcing of it so that you know, developers can take advantage of uh, seeing the code, they can contribute uh, features or bug fixes to the code if they want to. Uh, and it, you know, it's just part of our, I say, a broader move that we've done across Microsoft the last couple of years of really embracing open source. And that doesn't mean just using it, uh, but also contributing back to it with our own projects. Scott, can you scooch forward just yep. a little bit more? Okay, yeah, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, um, it seems like you guys really put a flag in the ground this year around IoT in general. I mean, how important is that emerging technology to your overall strategy, your competitive strategy? as you look out across the cloud? Well, I think if you look, you know, again, even just look 18 months from now, you know, if there's 20 billion devices in the world that are, that are internet connected, you know, the vast majority of those will be IoT. And, you know, we'd very much see IoT as the next frontier, both as a platform company and a cloud vendor, but more importantly, just as, as humans, uh, you know, it is going to be one of these things where when we wake up in the morning, get ready, drive to our car, you know, drive somewhere for work, get a coffee from Starbucks. You know, all three of those scenarios we showed IoT related today in the keynotes. You know, real applications that aren't science fiction, but are you know companies doing it today. You know, Starbucks was in my keynote talking about using IoT with the baristas to basically deliver a better cup of coffee. Um, you know, we, we showed similarly whether it's retail, whether it's around manufacturing, whether it's around consumer devices. You know, all those all those things that we kind of take for granted going forward as human beings are going to be in some way, shape, or form augmented and made better using IoT and AI. Well, it's really interesting how much you talked about IoT and AI and also data privacy. These devices and these systems are going to generate untold amounts of data, personal data about people in their lives, in their homes, in their businesses. You know, I understand the commitment Microsoft is making to, you know, value that privacy, but how do you plan to live up to that as these services evolve? Well, I think, you know, trust, it needs to be at the foundation of both the software you build going forward, as well as, you know, in the case of like a cloud vendor like us, the platform that we provide. And so we put in a tremendous amount of focus around data sovereignty, data residency, compliance certifications. You know, we have, we have uh, more compliance certifications, more countries with data residency, and more data sovereignty uh, uh, 
areas than any other cloud vendor. And you know, I think the other thing that's going to be important as we think about AI more broadly is this uh, really important focus around using AI for good and not uh, abusing people's trust in the data and the devices that they integrate and expose. And I think trust is going to be at a premium as a consumer when you make your decision on what you devices you do. And you know, even things like some of the demos, just to bring it back to technology, you know, those cases where we have cameras that are doing face detection, you know, one beautiful thing about doing edge-based computing is my face wasn't being uploaded to the cloud to do the detection on it. Uh, all that AI detection was being done on the device. My data was never leaving my home. Uh, you know, having that type of balance between edge and cloud-based computing, you know, I think is going to be important uh, just from a, a data privacy perspective going forward, because you don't want all that data always being uploaded uh, into you know, another environment. So Scott, I know you've got to run to another appointment, but one last question here. You've got 6,000 developers here. It's one of the largest build developer conferences Microsoft has had. What is your comment to these developers competitively? Why should they consider Azure over something like Google Cloud Platform, Amazon Web Services? What's your pitch? Because AWS still has the hearts and minds of many startups and developers, and that's something where you guys are really trying to make inroads. Well, I think you know, the, the important thing when you think about developers is at the end of the day, you know, developers value you know, product truth, and they really value you know, what are the, the tools that make them successful, whether they're development IDEs, whether they're languages, whether they're cloud platforms. And you know, they value in terms of both being able to build amazing experiences and be able to do it with high productivity. And in the case of, you know, for an enterprise or a company that has existing investments, how easily can you also help me bring my existing systems forward and integrate with it uh, and do that in a trusted way? And when we talk about Azure, you know, and what we try to really show in the keynote, and I sort of let up front and at, the, at the end, it's around productivity. You know, as you saw, I think nine or 10 demos in my keynote writing code, this isn't sort of just architecture, it's like let's actually speak to the hearts and minds of the developers and show them just how easy and, and powerful it is and how open we are now in terms of the languages, tools, and frameworks that we support. Uh, we, you know, we showed off hybrid and showed how you can integrate with existing systems and really start to leverage the cloud in a really fast way without having to rip and replace everything. You know, we showed off AI and intelligence and how you can basically weave that in to all your solutions, both in terms of AI itself, but also with things like Cosmos DB and the new multi-master write support that really is groundbreaking in terms of enabling you to store and process data. And we talked a lot today, which is sort of unique, I'd say, for a tech conference around trust and around the importance of uh, both building secure solutions, but also from a privacy perspective, you know, really doing what's right for the world. And you know, at the end of the day, I'm a big believer in show, don't tell. And you know, I think today, seem like from the Twitter and from the feedback we've gotten, people are pretty excited about what they saw and how much they could do and how easy it was. And um, you know, we're going to keep telling that story and keep showing it. And uh, you know, we expect us to continue to see our business grow the way it has, which has been phenomenal. Great. Well, Scott, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, Thanks. it's fun to be part of this experiment with you. So cool. let's <laughs> take off. Thanks. See you, Scott. All right, that is Take Scott care. Guthrie, the Executive Vice President of Microsoft's Cloud and AI Group.